Hello everybody and welcome back to this YouTube series on SQL Alchemy. In this video, I will show you how to create declarative one-to-many relationships in SQL Alchemy. But first off, real quick, if you find this video helpful, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more programming content. It also helps out the channel. But first up, we'll get into our models.py file and from here we have our imports up here at the top that we will need for this. We also have our database URL, which is using SQLite. Then we will go ahead and create an engine from our URL to connect to it. And from here, we'll go ahead and create a session binding to our engine so we can perform transactions. And we get our actual session object from calling the session class. And then here we'll go ahead and set our base is equal to declarative base. This will be used for our classes so we can easily create columns. Now there are a couple different ways to declare relationships in SQL Alchemy. There's a mapped and non-mapped method that we will go over in this video. So first up, we'll go over the non-mapped method. We'll go ahead and create a base model class that inherits from our declarative base. We will say abstract equals true, allowing other classes to inherit from this without creating another table or having some kind of error thrown. And for this unmapped method, we do need to declare a dunder allow unmapped and set it equal to true. If we don't do this, SQL Alchemy will not be happy with the way we're going to do this method. Well, we go ahead and set an ID is equal to column of integer and we set it as a primary key, allowing it to auto increment on its own. And then we will declare an addresses class that inherits from our base model. And then we set a dunder table name equal to addresses. This will be the name of the table in the database. And then we have the columns of city, state, and zip code. We then have our user class with the table name of users with a name and an age. And from here, we want to create the relationship between user and addresses to say that a user can have more than one address. So essentially, a user will have a list of addresses. And so we can do that by setting an addresses variable equals to relationship of our class addresses. SQL Alchemy will allow you to pass the class's object directly, or you can pass a string of the class name. This is very useful for whenever you have to import classes from different files and you end up getting circular imports. This can help prevent it just by simply providing quotations around the class name. But since this is in the same file, we'll go ahead and just leave it as it is. And so once we've made this relationship, we need to supply a foreign key on a different table that we want the relationship to be. So in this case, we have the class addresses. We need a foreign key to be in here that is from our users table. Let me show you what I mean. So we do this by adding a user ID field here and we set it equal to column of foreign key. And in here we pass in quotations, our table name, and then the column that we want the foreign key to be. So in this case, users.id will be our foreign key that we will use for this relationship. And then we go ahead and declare base.metadata.create all of our engine to go ahead and create all of our tables. So since we have this set up, let's see how this works with an actual example. Okay, and so for both of these classes, I'm adding a double under repr function to these, and this will make it easier to show data from this class, and it'll be really useful in the demo so you can get a good understanding of what's actually happening. But we'll go ahead and go over to our app.py file. And in here, we go ahead and have our imports of from our models class, we're importing address, session, and user. So we're gonna go ahead and start off by creating our users that we're gonna use. And we'll go ahead and do this by saying user1 and user2 both equal a user object. We'll pass it a name and an age for both. And then we'll go ahead and create the addresses for this. So here we have three addresses, all with different cities, states, and zip codes. And now that we have our users and our address objects, we'll go ahead and relate them to each other. And so the default behavior of a relationship in SQL Alchemy is a list structure. So we can use list functions on it. So for example, we take our users one dot addresses, which if we go back into our models file is this relationship right here. We can extend the list with two of our addresses and we extend it with a list of our addresses, or we can just append a value to it. Now that we have that, we'll go ahead and add our users and addresses into our session and commit to the database. And so once we go ahead and do that, we'll go ahead and use an F string to see what our users one addresses are equal to and what our users two addresses are equal to. Now for me, I'm going to go ahead and delete the current database I have. Whenever I run this, it'll create a new one, but we will go ahead and run this. And we can see that it did successfully create our users with a relationship to addresses. We can see our user one addresses has these two addresses inside of it. 
and our user2 has this address. So setting up relationships in SQL Alchemy are pretty simple and pretty easy. There could also be another use case where you want to access the user associated to an address just by querying the database and getting an address. So we can do this by adding user equals relationship of our user object. And in doing this, we can go back over to our app.py file. And we'll go ahead and add another print statement down here of addresses1.user. And if we go ahead and run this, we can see that it does print addresses1.user and it has the user associated to that object. But this also does throw an SA warning saying that the relationship will copy columns user ID. We can get around this in a couple of ways, but I'll just go over one way that's adding the back populates argument to the user relationship in the address class. So if we go ahead and head back over to our models.py file and in here at this user relationship, we add the argument back populates equals. And for this string, we want to make it what we call the relationship over here. We go ahead and paste that in there as back populates is addresses since that is on our user table. So once we add that, we can head back over to our app.py file and we'll go ahead and run this again. And it does the exact same thing without that warning. So cool. Now let's look at another way to declare relationships in SQL Alchemy using the mapped method. So if we head back over into our models.py file here, and in here we'll wanna go ahead and add the imports of mapped and mapped column. And then once we do that, we can scroll down here to our classes. For this user ID, we can actually end up changing this to use type hints for this mapped variable that we imported. SQL Alchemy will go ahead and use these type hints to do whatever it needs to do to make these relationships happen. So for this user relationship, we can go ahead and add this type hint of mapped of our user object. And in doing this, we don't need this in the relationship over here. Since SQL Alchemy will go ahead and look at this and already know that it is mapped to our user object. Down here in our user class, we can go ahead and add another type hint for addresses to be a mapped list of addresses. And over here, we can get rid of this addresses class name. So once we do that, we now have the mapped way to create relationships in SQL Alchemy. And if you did want to change this relationship from a set, you can provide one of the arguments or you could change this map method to a set. But we will go ahead and leave it as a list for now. And we'll go ahead and head back over to our app.py file and we'll go ahead and run this to see that it works all the same. And it does. And you can see these IDs are getting larger and that's because it's just adding new data to the database. It's not using already existing data. So each time we run this file, it's creating more and more data. So cool, now you know how to make a relationship from one class to the other. So now let's take a look into a relationship where a table references itself. This is very useful whenever you have something like a user following another user. And so there's now a list of users that they are following. And it's a little bit different to set up in SQL Alchemy, but I'll go ahead and show you an example here. So here we've gotten rid of the addresses class and the base model class. Uh, we just have our user inheriting from our declarative base. And this is using the unmap method. So we'll need this variable allow unmap to be true. And then we've set an ID directly in our user table with a username. And we've set up a follower ID, which is going to be a foreign key of users.id, which is referencing itself. And then we're adding a following relationship to our user table. And since we are declaring this relationship to be a relationship to the same table, we need to provide this remote side argument and set it equal to the, the foreign key that we want it to be. So in this case, it'll be ID. This remote side equals ID refers to the other side of the relationship and set what the foreign key should be linked to. So the foreign key is linked to the ID column of our user. So in the example that we did earlier from our users to our addresses of a one to many relationship, the user ID in the addresses table is the equivalent of remote side equals ID. And then for this case, it is only specifying a one to one relationship right here. So we do need to pass this use list equals true variable to make it in the form of a list so we can have a list of people that we are following. And since we have that set up in this underscore underscore repr function, we're going to go ahead and add following equals self.following. So we'll go ahead and head over to our app.py file. 
And in here, we are importing our session in our user, and we're creating three users. All of these are Zec texts in the form of one, two, three. And for user one, we're adding user two to the following list. And user two, we're adding user three to their following list. And then we're going to add all three users into the session and commit it. Then we will go ahead and print out what each user is following. And since I'm changing the models around, it's going to throw an error with the database. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this for now. You wouldn't actually want to do this in a production environment, but this is just for testing and playing around. But we'll go ahead and run this. Cool, and we can see that it is printing out each user and who that user is following. So we can see here that our user one is following our user two, which is ZecTech two, and user two is following user three. And currently user three is not following anyone. And we can see that whenever we're printing out this user object, we can see what that user is following. So here we can see user one is following user two and user two is following user three. So we can see all the relationships here at work. This works well and we can see the relationships, but there is a problem with this. If you try to follow a user that is already following the current user, there will be a circular dependency error. So here's an example of how we're gonna get the error. So all the code is the same, except we added this line here where user three is now going to follow user one, but user one is following user two User two is following user three and three is following one. So it's constantly going in a circle with relationships. So if we go ahead and run this, we can see that there is a circular dependency detected and SQL Alchemy doesn't like this. So it's throwing an error. So we can fix this using an association table. An association table is a way to establish a relationship between two different tables without directly adding a column to either table. An association table is like a bridge connecting two tables together helping you manage and maintain the relationship in a more organized way. And it typically contains two columns, each representing a foreign key to the primary keys of both tables. And these columns will establish the relationships between the two tables. It also lets us get around the circular dependency. So let's look at how to implement this. We'll head back over to our models.py file. All right, so back in the models class, I've changed the code back to how we had in the beginning where we had a base model class with abstract and unmapped to true with an ID inheriting from base and our user is now inheriting from our base model. Uh, we'll go ahead and create an association table and we'll do that by creating a class called following association inheriting from our base model. And here we'll give it a table name of following association. You can name it whatever you want, but this is why I'm naming it for this. Then we will go ahead and provide a user ID and make an integer as a foreign key of users.id. And then we will go ahead and add following ID as the exact same thing. And that's all you need to do to set up an association table. Now we just kind of set up the relationship to correctly work with this. So we can do that by going down into our following equals relationship of user. For relationship, we're going to add this secondary, which is the secondary table that will be associated with this relationship. So in this case, it is following association as the table we have up here. Then we need to specify a primary join condition saying when the following association dot user ID is equal to user dot ID. This is linking the current user to the table. Then we need to specify a secondary join that will link the table to the other user. So this primary join links the current user to the table and the secondary join links the table to the following person. I just note that everything else in this file is the same except for the classes that we created. So we'll go ahead and head back over to our app.py file and all the code in here is the same as we had it earlier, but we'll go ahead and run this and we can see that it does work. Now we can see it says following equals to these ellipses. I uh, mean that there are more relationships there that it's going through that is not going to display, but it's not giving us the error anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like comment and subscribe for more.